Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This week I'm going to teach you how to create a unique header design using Elementor Pro. This is a topic that I've definitely covered before on this channel, but I think the ability to customize your header really easily is something that's pretty unique to Elementor Pro and I don't think people are taking full advantage of it. Your header sits at the top of your page and includes important information such as your logo and navigation bar. Generally, a header remains the same throughout your website, but there are cases where it might be different depending on the page that you're on. I talk more about this in this video here. Because of this, headers are created using templates. Templates allow for easier editing because you can change one file and the changes populate throughout versus having to edit each page individually. Historically, WordPress has made it pretty hard to edit website headers. Before page builders like Elementor Pro existed, you were really reliant on your WordPress theme settings. You can maybe change the colors, the fonts, and the placement of your logo or navigation bar, but honestly, that was really it. That meant having something super customized was often left to a programmer that would build you a completely custom website. And while those sites look and function great, the problem comes when you need to edit something. Because everything is done custom, you have to rely on a programmer or you need to learn how to code yourself. Page builders like Elementor Pro fix this problem by making it so that your site wasn't reliant on WordPress theme settings and customizations could be made using a visual drag and drop builder. That means you no longer need a degree in programming to make updates to your website. Today, I'm going to walk you through how I created this header design using Elementor Pro. You'll learn how I set everything up, as well as the settings and widgets I use so you can make something that looks similar for your website. This template is also available for purchase in our shop. So if you aren't interested in learning the tutorial and just want something that you can use quickly on your website, head on over to the link in the description. Included are import instructions so you can learn how to import Elementor Pro templates so you have everything you need to customize this for your own website. For those interested in learning how this tutorial was created, stay tuned because we're getting started right now. I'll start by going to the Templates tab in Elementor Pro, clicking on Add New, then selecting Pop-up as my template type. I'm going to call this template Pop-up Menu. I'm going to close this window with pre-made pop-up designs so we can start with a blank canvas. The first thing that I'm going to do is head to Settings so I can adjust the width and height of this pop-up. For width, I'll select 100VH and height, I'll select fit to screen. Next, I'll select a two column structure. I'm going to change the layout to full width and the columns gap to wider. Now it's time to start adding widgets. In the left column, I'll start by adding my site logo. I'll align the logo to the left and change the size to 300 pixels by clicking on the style tab. Then I'll add a navigation menu widget underneath. I'm going to change the layout from horizontal to vertical, remove the pointer style, and remove the mobile drop-down breakpoint. Next, I'll click on the Style tab to customize the look of this menu. Since we're accessing this menu via a hamburger icon in our header and our menu doesn't have any submenus, the only settings I'm changing here are related to the main menu. This will make more sense later in the tutorial. I'd like to add social media icons to my menu, so I'm going to add first a heading widget and change the HTML tag to a P tag. Then change the text to say follow us. That text is way too small, so I'll go to my style tab to increase the font size as well as change the color so it matches the text above. I'll go back to the widgets and add a social icons widget underneath. I'll align the icons to the left and add a few more. Then I'll customize the look of this widget by going to the style tab and changing the colors and spacing so the icons better match the overall branding. I'm going back to my follow us text 
then clicking the Advanced tab so I can change the width from default to inline. I'm going to do the same for my social icons. The result is that these widgets end up floating side by side instead of stacking on top of each other. I'm adding a little left padding to the icons to make it look better. Now I'm going to change the color of this entire section. I'll do this by going to the Style tab and choosing a background color. Let's move on to the right column. I'll open up the navigator so I can click on the column to edit it. I want to add a background image to this area. I'll go to Style, Background, and insert an image that I've selected for this area. I'll adjust the size to cover, the position to bottom center, and the repeat to no repeat. I can now see much more of the image, but I still need to make a few adjustments. Because there are no widgets in this right column, it's inheriting the height from the left column, which makes everything look a little bit cramped. I can adjust this by adding a spacer here. If I set the height to 75VH, we get a little more breathing room. To adjust things even more, I'll click on the left column and change the vertical align settings, then make some adjustments to the padding of that column by clicking on the advanced tab. Next, I'm going to change the look of the close button. I'll click on settings, then go to style and open the tab for close button. I'll change the size as well as the color on normal and hover state. Next, I'm going to play around with some entrance animations. This controls the look when someone clicks to trigger the pop-up, as well as when someone closes it. You'll see what I mean in a minute. I'll do a fade in for entrance and a fade out for exit. Now I'll start working on the tablet and mobile settings. Since we don't have as much space to work with on tablet and mobile devices, I think it's best to hide the image column altogether on these breakpoints. Elementor Pro makes this very easy to do. I'll go to Advanced, click Responsive, then click the toggles to hide on tablet and mobile. Now I want to adjust my left column width so it fills the space. I'll click on the column and under Layout, change the width from 50% to 100%. Moving on to the mobile settings. I want to adjust the padding of this column so everything fits nicely. I'll click on the column, go to advanced, and adjust my settings there. When you're in responsive mode, you're adjusting settings only for specific mobile breakpoints, not universally. So doing this won't affect any settings for tablet or desktop screens, but will make the layout on mobile look much better. When adjusting responsive settings, I generally like to play around and test a few times until I get it looking the way that I want. So now I present to you the process of me tweaking this design. I'm going to publish this pop-up so we can test how it works. I'm going to exit out of this page, then open up my header template in Elementor Pro. As you can see, my header is pretty simple. I have my logo on the left and an icon on the right. What I need to do now is make it so that when people click on the icon, my pop-up menu opens. If I click on the icon widget, you'll see that I'm using one of the icons that's included with Elementor Pro, but you do have the option to upload your own custom SVG icon. You also have the option to add a link. This is where the magic happens. 
I'll click on this icon to make the link dynamic. Then I'll scroll down to pop up. After I select that, I'll click this to open up the pop-up settings. By default, the action is set to open pop-up, so I'll leave that alone because that's what we want it to do. Under pop-up, I need to set this to what I just created. I'll click here and start typing the name of the pop-up. Let's take a look at what happens after I hit save. Now, when I click on the icon in my header, the pop-up menu displays. I'm going to go back to the editor and make a few more adjustments to the pop-up menu. I didn't really like how the logo jumped when I clicked on the icon, so I'm going to make adjustments so that it remains in the same spot. Next, I'm going to adjust the navigation and social icon area to give it a little more space on the left as well as on the bottom. I've also decided that I don't really like the fade in, fade out effect that I've added, so I'm going to remove that. I'm going to save this again and take a look. I think that's much better. That's it for today's video. I hope that you learned something new and got some ideas for how you can apply this to your own website. Make sure you check out our shop where you can purchase this template as well as some other resources. And for more Elementor tutorials, click on this playlist here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.